Good morning, folks. We've got plasma filaments to watch. Another earthquake uptake is coming, followed by intensified solar wind. We've got storm runs and top science news, but let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. Dark coronal holes incoming, not a whole lot of bright active regions, flashes, or eruptive motions. The X-ray flux is flatlined as the sun traipses through sunspot cycle minimum. Filaments complement the incoming coronal holes, though. Left side, we do see Earth-sized ropes of plasma dancing around, but thus far no major ones entering the Earth-facing longitudes. Solar wind here. Variation between 350 and 450 kilometers per second is just normal ambient variation in the solar wind. We do have a calm stream and calm geomagnetism, but still up off the floor a bit, thankfully. That's going to continue as the phi angle shift this week tells us that another stream is on the way. As more coronal holes become visible, we also have to re-elevate the earthquake watch for when the magnetic connections to these openings occurs this weekend. Top weather event the last day was in Qatar. The day after the sandstorm turned the future site of the World Cup into an orange, blistering scene, down came a year of rains in just one day. The top lithospheric node of the last day was a volcano going off in the Aleutian Island chain of Alaska, small but indicative of uptick along the chain that's been quiet so far the last few weeks. Let's start the news stories aesthetically with Mars terrace views in false color. The sulfur detections in the walled, step-like layers offers yet further evidence for there being high volume and high activity oceanic conditions on Mars deep in the past. Also want to look down on where Georgia and Florida meet, and luckily, that is not oil. It's Blackwater River, full of organics and bio-usable material. The delineation lines are beautiful, and this is good for the life in the region. Now for the top science stories. So we've seen no space weather subfield with more confirmations of human health effect than cosmic rays. Most recently, we learned that young neuron survivability and new neuron production are affected by cosmic rays in a mouse model, and this seems to hold true when the gray and white matter of cosmonaut brains were examined. The solidification of this science keeps getting boosted. Last but not least, the faint and elusive dust cloud satellites of Earth have been confirmed. At the L4 and 5 Lagrange points, orbiting at roughly the distance of the moon, separated out ahead of it and behind it in its 21-day orbit around the Earth, these regions should trap interplanetary dust and gases before either a CME wipes them away or a static critical point discharges and the material expels. This is a possible contender to explain otherwise unexplained electromagnetic variability in geospace, especially during quiet space weather conditions. Folks, we greatly appreciate your support. Website members, it is Saturday, so our Fly on the Wall podcast is coming up in just a few hours. We've got your wind maps and shots of our start to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.35 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.